Now we're going to reassemble our sander. Um, the first step uh, before reassembling the gearbox is that this gearbox needs to be as clean as possible. First step is installing the new worm gear and uh, bearing package. Now these bearings here are actually original to the machine, but this style of bearing, and this is a kind of a period bearing, these metal rings can be removed and the seal can be taken out and these bearings can be re-greased, which is what I did in this instance because they're, uh, they're very good quality bearings and there wasn't anything wrong with them, so we just reused those. You'll need to uh, use a little bit of force to get this bearing package back into its spot and uh, it's a pretty tight fit. Sometimes if you get lucky it'll work its way most of the way in with finger pressure, but usually it takes a little bit of tapping. And the tap the bearing in the rest of the way. This is a uh, good place to use a uh, deep well impact socket. And tap on that inner ray so I'm not putting stress on the bearing. The next step is to install our rear roller. Now if you look inside the rear roller, you'll notice a copper bushing that needs to stay there. That forms a variety of functions, but the uh, one of its main functions is to act as a shim, and without that, the roller will not set in the right place relative to the front roller. That goes through its needle bearings, which we uh, we put a dab of grease in there, and we use the the roller spindle to force the grease into its uh, recess between these two set of needle bearings. Our next step is we are going to install the bearing retainer. The bearing retainer fits in this machine socket here and is held in by the edges of three screws. It just fits in there like that. And we're going to screw that into place. Now that we've installed the bearing retainer, we're going to put our uh, sprockets and chain back on. This is what is actually the uh, drive assembly for the lower roller. Now, a tactic that I found works very well is to use the um, pair of slip joint pliers to press the widget keys into place. They're a very snug fit. Just be careful you don't damage the threads on the uh, shaft. And you just line up your widget keys with the key slot in these two gears. And again, you're using your socket. This is a 14 millimeter socket. You make sure that everything rotates pretty well. The next step is to install our armature. And the armature on the 503 also has to support the dust band. So how it breaks down is there's a seal, a bearing, a slinger, the worm gear, a spacer, a spring washer, a seal and its cover, and then a fan and nut. We've already installed our bearing and its seal in this unit already. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the slinger and all the other portions when we install the armature. Now the tricky part this slinger will not fit over the armature once it's in place. So you have to put this back in the recess first. Hold it up against the wall of your finger. And work the armature through it. So that will allow you to put your worm onto the armature. And use that to hold the slinger in place. While you tap on the end of the armature. Home. Now you'll notice at this point that if I rotate the roller, the worm gear, or the worm is moved back and forth by the worm gear. That's a good sign, just making sure that nothing's bound up. And rotating the armature should also work the worm in and out of its housing. So everything's in good shape there. Our next step is to install our spacer. It goes in front of the worm gear. We then have a brass bushing. Uh, if you look at the breakdown, supporter cable refers to this as a bearing, but it's just a brass bushing. 
We then put our spring washer in over that. And lastly, our seal and its machined housing. Now installing the seal, it's important to make sure that the lips of the seal do not hang up on the outside of the spacer. And if you run into that problem, you can chamfer the very edge of the spacer. Uh, I would use a small file to make sure that it fits over there because the spacer actually will stand slightly clear of this housing. So now we're going to go ahead and install our screws and hold all this in place. And then we're ready to mount our fan. Now that we have the seal and its housing in place, we're going to reinstall our fan. Now, if you rotate the armature this stage, the chain does not move. It'll twitch a little bit. That's normal because there's nothing binding that worm to its actual uh, spindle. It's just rotating on it. But uh, again, as you go, every step, it's not a bad idea. Just make sure everything works freely. So you don't want to bind this up. A, uh, a common cause of problems would be if something were causing this worm drive to bind, which will cause the armature to overheat. But uh, we're going to install our fan now. There are two washers that go to either side of the fan. We're going to put this one on first. Make sure to push everything all the way back. The spacer stands a little proud of this housing, so the washer will not be rubbing this. And we install our fan, which uh, our fan, I don't know if you can see that, has actually been drilled for balancing from the factory. That's a dust fan. That's a pretty impressive there. The next step is to put our other washer on. The spur washer. And the nut. And we'll thread that into place. Now we're going to need to hold on to the armature in order to do this. So, grasp the armature firmly in one hand and ratchet in the other. And now we tighten down the fan. Now we won't install the rear cover yet because our next step will be to put our field housing back in place. Now the easiest way to do this, pull your grommet for your wires off, stuff that in from the top, and then you have to work your grommet wires back through it without knocking it out of place too many times. You don't want your wires rubbing against the exposed edges of the housing because it can cause them to get abraded and eventually short out. Get those started. Now the trick to doing this successfully is you have to hold the drum down while simultaneously fishing the wires through with one hand and pulling the field housing into position with the other hand. Now there is no spring washer on the end of this armature like there are on other sanders like the 504. That's all done by the spring washer back here. So this just gets put into place like so. And usually it takes a gentle tap or two of the mallet to get everything in place. Now we're going to reinstall our three field screws, which are on the 503, are all matching screws. On the 504, the bottom one's longer than the hub two. It's not the case here. So this is pretty straightforward. You're going to want to start all three of these before you tighten any of them down because these screws are not supported for a very long portion of their body and it's sometimes a little bit of a fishing expedition to get them into place. At this point, again, we're going to check and make sure that uh, everything rotates freely. Now you can see the uh, method with the uh, drive to the rear roller. We are going to now install our trim cap over the top of the sander. And these two wires are routed out the back. It's just, uh, it's important to make sure they're not pinched by anything. It's not really a secret of that. 
Now there is no gasket that goes under this because really this doesn't serve any function except protecting the wires. The uh, dust collection goes straight from this tube down in this housing. And there's usually very little dust that's accumulated in here over time. Now at this point we're going to reinstall our rear cover. And we've chipped out all our dust from the uh, rear housing. That fan acts as a baffle, but the dust is actually drawn up through here and drawn through and deposited in the bag by the fan. And it's a, uh, it's a very good system, and Porter Cable never saw any reason to alter it in all the years that this sander was made. And it worked pretty much, pretty much from the get-go. This sander, being an early sander, has a larger dust port than the uh, later ones, and they uh, consequently has a slightly larger bag, so it's a, actually a little bit more efficient than its successors. With any of these uh, castings, I recommend getting all screws started before you tighten anything down. Um, it's very possible to distort these or run into so much slop in the screw holes that the casting doesn't line up quite right unless all three are in place. Next, we're going to grease the chain and we're going to install the cover over that. And the easiest way is just to lie the sander on the side, get your part of cable grease. And you don't have to fill the cavity up, the chain will actually distribute it. I usually concern myself with filling in the space between the two sprockets. That seems to be a pretty good indication of how much grease you actually need. And it's something that it is, it's a good idea to check it every once so often. But there's really no place for the grease to go and not a whole lot's required, so it's not a major concern. We're going to reinstall our old gasket. And our cover. I'm going to go ahead and screw down all the screws. Now the uh, 503 does not use a spring clip like the 504 to uh, put tension on the chain. But uh, that being said, it's very rare for that chain to come off, so it's nothing to be concerned with. It's just how the design is built this. <laughs> 